Hey guys! Today we're going to be transforming a men's button-up shirt into a skirt. And you're just going to need the shirt itself. Um, but when you go to the store, Goodwill or Salvation's Army, wherever, and pick up the shirt, you'll want to make sure that it's big enough and that it fits around your waist. So you'll just want to place it in front of you, like in front of your hips, and make sure that it goes more than halfway around. As long as it does that, then you'll be good. So you'll just want to make sure that it's big enough. But other than that, let's get started. Okay, first things first, you're going to want to decide how long you want your skirt. And this one, I'm going to be making 13 inches long. So I'm just going to make a mark on both sides at 13 inches. And then cut straight across. Make sure before you cut that you have the buttons closed so then it's all lying flat and what you're cutting doesn't get wonky and that sort of thing. So I made this 13 inches long, but then I'm also going to be adding on a waistband. So um, you'll just want to take those measurements into account before you cut it. And while we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out these pockets around it so then I can just go ahead and tack it onto the skirt later. So just make sure you give yourself enough room, some seam allowance, so just be really generous. waistband we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and use a back panel of fabric and for the waistband I want it to be two inches tall folded over so I'm going to make a five inch tall piece of fabric so that when it's folded in half I'll have a half inch for seam allowance so it'll be five inches tall and then I want the circumference of the waistband to be 35 inches and we're going to have to do two separate pieces. So divide 35 by 2, that gives you 17 and a half. So 17 and a half by 5. And the 35 includes seam allowance for the circumference, but um, you just measure it for whatever circumference you need. Okay, so when it came to the waist measure measurement, I fudged up a little. So you'll want to take your circumference of your hips and then add on an inch to two inches so that it overlaps in the front. So then you can put either snaps or a button or some sort of closure. Because if you do your exact waist or hip circumference, then there will be no way to close it at the top. So you need a little bit of overlap. So I just cut an extra two inch long piece and I'm just gonna sew it on there and you'll be able to see the seam, but at least it'll be wearable. So when it comes to the length of the top of the skirt, it's going to be larger than your waist measurement. So you have a couple options. You can either have it so that um, where it gathers at the top or you can go ahead and take in the sides and actually just sew in the sides to make it just a slimmer fitting rather than a bun like a bunched at the top and flares out at the bottom. So you can have a little design freedom there, but I'm just going to go ahead and gather the top instead of cutting it and then attach it to the waistband. All right, I'm going to make sure that the right sides are facing each other uh, for the waistband, taking the two long pieces and then just sewing 
the seam here and then I'm going to go ahead and sew my extra little piece on also. I went ahead and top stitched the seam lines. I think top stitching makes looks look a lot more professional and neat looking. So the next step we're going to do is fold our waistband in half hot dog way with right um, sides facing together. And then we're gonna take our raw edge. So if you have two raw edges, you'll wanna do this to both ends. But then we're just gonna go ahead and sew or serge right along here. Then flip right sides out and then we are going to sew or serge all the way along the uh, bottom edge so that it's easier to attach to the actual skirt. All right, since I'm going to be gathering the top of my skirt, um, I'm going to want to make sure that the machine is set on a basting stitch, which means it is at the widest length or the longest length stitch possible. So we're just going to put it under there, close to the top, and we're just going to do a long running stitch all the way around. And then once we've done that, once I get done doing that, I'll show you what to do next. And we don't want to backstitch starting or stopping, so just go straight through. Okay, now once you've done that, you're going to want to take the top string, which is the green one we've got here, and you're gonna wanna hold that and then pull on your fabric so it bunches. And then once you've got it bunched a little, then you can distribute the bunches. And you're just gonna do that on this end and the other end until the measurement around the top matches the measurement of your waistband.
After sewing the waistband on, we're just gonna go and top stitch, fold the seam underneath the waistband and then top stitch it down. And then this little overflow that we have here, the little flap, we're gonna fold that under and top stitch that also. So it's got a nice clean bottom on it. Um, another option that I forgot to mention for shortening the top length or width of the skirt is you could also put in pleats, um, but that's just another option. So we're just gonna go ahead and top stitch around. When it comes to putting on the pockets, we are going to put them on the back. And I recommend just unbuttoning the front of the skirt so it's one long piece. It's a lot easier to work with. And then you're just going to put the pockets where you want them to be. And that um, seam allowance that we allowed, we cut for, we're just gonna fold that under like I did here. Just fold it under so that it's a nice, clean edge. And then just go ahead and pin all around so that it stays in place. And then you can just go ahead and stitch around and you've got yourself a nice little pocket. So for the closure up top, we're going to be pressing on 5 8 inch snap buttons and we're going to be using this press. We got the buttons, the um, press itself, and the dies all online. Um, your local fabric store might have some snaps and dies. Um, but if you're looking for something like this, we got this online. So you're just gonna want to figure out where you want your snaps. Um, also, you can always do um, just a regular button and buttonhole. Um, a lot of sewing machines have those, the buttonhole feature on there. So if you don't have this press, you can still put a button on there. This is just what we're doing. Um, so we're just gonna mark the bottom where we want it with chalk. And then we are going to prep, put a little hole in there. Not too big of a hole, but just so that this little post can fit through. Once you've got those through, you're gonna take the opposite side, put it oops, that way. And then flat side goes on the bottom.
So from there, we're going to rub chalk on the bottom of these, line up the top of the skirt, is where we're going to place our holes for the bottom side of the button. And we've got those through those holes and we're gonna put the top there. So as opposed to this, the smooth sides are facing outward, but for this side of the snap, you want the smooth sides facing on the inside. So then, since those are smaller, different size, we've got to change out the dies and have another video up for you within the next week so stay tuned and if you like and you want to see more be sure to like and subscribe i'll see you later bye guys